Pack Nation, welcome to another episode of Tuffy Talk here. We are finally ready here to wrap up NC State Wrestling. I know it you know, definitely was uh, a tough pill to swallow for sure. So I think we definitely had high expectations, rightfully so, heading into this NCAA tournament, which, uh, you know, I would say, I wouldn't necessarily say they weren't met, but I would just say it was, it was a roller coaster. It was, it went from really good to rough to really good to rough and it was all over the place. So we're going to be breaking that down today. And here with me today, we got Nigel Jones, former NC State wrestler, NCAA qualifier, 165 pounds. Uh, Nigel, appreciate you joining us, my man. Yeah. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Yeah. For those that may recognize him or don't, we actually had him on uh, when we did our watch party for the Virginia Tech wrestling match. And uh, one of the things that still stands out to me, which, uh, you know, Nigel, we'll kind of try and do this kind of class by class ish. But uh, still one quote that stands out to me is during the Bryce Andoni and Ed Scott match, how, you know, there was like probably like 20 points scored in the first period alone. And, you know, and, and me, I was sitting there going, man, like, you know, this is, this is odd. Like what's going on with Ed here? But you, you, your quote was, this is a, Ed, this is a Scott and Donian match. This is a back and forth, like offense all over the place match. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, talking about uh, NCAA championships alone, they faced obviously in the constellations and uh, Ed Scott, I mean, it was a pretty low scoring match. I think it was like seven seven for I mean, which for Ed Scott <laughs> for them, yeah, pretty low. It was pretty low. Um, and so you know, but for Ed Scott to break through and get that win over Andoni, and who a lot of people had circled as kind of a dark horse at the one fifty seven uh, weight class, I mean, I think that's huge momentum heading into next season. I know, obviously, it didn't quite end. I'm sure as Ed Scott wanted to where he basically got fifth place uh because of a injury uh forfeit and so obviously i'm sure he would have loved to one actually you know with his hand raised instead of by default but you know what's your kind of you know thoughts in terms of i mean was was because i got i even got to get go ahead and give you props too because you texted us saying Ed scott was going to have his redemption today today is going to establish his legacy and I tweeted afterwards saying that 100% happened, winning five matches in one day, all against really tough opponents, fighting uphill, like yeah. getting a pin over Andonian. Dude, what a, what a day for Red Scott. Yeah. This, like, I, I not necessarily, like, stylistically 100%. I see a lot of, like, things that I was good at that Ed Scott was really good at. And he just mm-hmm. obviously – perfected it to like all the things I'm great at he's even better at and so I like mm-hmm. resonate with him so much when I see him wrestle so I could just like I can tell like hey he's got that look about him and we were, we said like we were talking in the in the group text and we were like oh he went down the first round or the second round and I said I remember I said hey like like we got Trombley through um so that Trombley and uh Oh my gosh, what's her 25 pounder? His name um, always escapes oh, uh, me. I'm so uh, sorry. Ger- yeah, Chair Trombley. Um, uh, Trombley. Camacho? Yeah, oh, Trombley, yeah, Trombley. Yeah. I always mix yeah. him and Trumble and Isaac up. So I was oh, saying okay, it right. Okay. I was saying it right. So I said, I, even, I said, hey, we got him through, and Ed not getting through isn't necessarily a bad thing because he's going to get pins on the backside. And as soon as he touched the mat, like I think he had like two in a row. And then it's that's such a tough losing in the first round is like almost insurmountable you'll see guys do it but then like you lose it in the second round can be just as tough because you like you may land a guy that also lost in the second round who was like a top 10 seed um Mm -hmm. and then unfortunately for other people ed was that guy that was the top 10 seed but um Mm -hmm. he just and he and i think he lost to the nine seed so it wasn't it wasn't like you know great like a crazy loss yeah it wasn't like a terrible loss and the NCAA mm-hmm. tournament is such a weird place. Well, uh, and, and just to kind of go over that day too. So again, Friday morning. So he had to face uh, uh, Papas from uh, George Mason, beat him by pinfall. Then he had to face Jacquez from Missouri, who is a 17th seed, who's no joke. He uh, won six one. And then the evening session, Ed Scott had to face uh, our Cardenas uh, mm-hmm. from uh, uh, Stanford, Stanford. six seed, and beat him uh, in overtime, which was huge. And then he had to face Andonian, who's been his almost kryptonite this season, uh, you know, from Virginia Tech and getting the pinfall over him, you know, in the third period. Like, 
oh, what a day. I mean, I think any wrestler in the whole country would have, I would absolutely bend over backwards to say they had a day like that. So you yeah. know, you've got to go ahead and start by giving huge shouts to Scott. Now, in terms of next steps for him, so we've seen two years of him now. And, uh, you know, obviously, if you're looking at who's ahead of him, that's uh, the first three. thing that we mentioned. Three, three years. Has he been yeah, three years? Yeah. Oh, okay. Dang. Yeah, he, right. I think well, he was a starter. He was a, he was a 49 pounder in 2020, 2021, I think. Okay. So he, um, yeah, so he must be, a, a, was so much, maybe that's a COVID sophomore then? Because I'm, yeah. I swear he's a sophomore. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He got the extra yeah, year. Yeah. Got the extra year. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we still got two more years left. So now, you know, obviously Andonian is, is a, is a senior. So, so he's going to be gone. Uh, so really for me, it's about taking that next step. And cause I think with Ed Scott, with the, as, as talented as he is, you got to set a, 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 you know, a goal of a national championship with him. I mean, anything else is, is, it just doesn't make sense. He's, he's that good. And he, he's this good, that young. That's like, okay, if he gets two more years, he should be able to get one. Um, what do you feel like needs to be the next step for him? Cause obviously we saw a huge funk from him, just more of, and not necessarily because of bad losses, but just because obviously he faced Austin O'Connor who ended up winning the national championship in the UNC duel, uh, lost to Andonian back in the Virginia tech duel, uh, had a rough time at the ACC championship and then NCAA championship obviously mm-hmm. didn't start off as he would want to, where he got kicked into the constellations. So what do you feel like really it, it will take for Ed Scott to take what he, what he accomplished on that Friday and really use that to build into next season to hopefully get maybe a, you know, an NCAA championship, uh, showing or even you know possibly competing for a national championship yeah I've, i mean he's right there austin o'connor's graduating and that's a tough match always is kind of a touch match for him i think he he was a little yeah. banged up but i think he got a win over him the year before um yeah, yeah. He adonis yeah. graduating yeah so i think for and, and ed's right there ed's right there for me personally like what we what i would love to see from ed you know, it's double A tournament. We we can't put the cart before the horse. I want to see him be a bonus points guy, like mm-hmm. bonus points into sixty per seventy percent of his matches. He's going to be a bonus points guy. I think once we get that, that's going to really set the tone for just his entire demeanor going into the NCAA. He's going to have the confidence. He's going to be in those tough matches, and he's going to you know be a huge point scorer for us. And then yeah. moving into that other phase, like I. Would love to see him become take a captain ish role. Hilly, Hilly, highly Trent is going to be back next year, and yeah. I, I am so I love those two guys. I don't know them overly personally, but I love I love Trent and I love Hayden and um, yeah. I th- and like you got to build, you got to take those guys and you got to build the rest of the future is going to be built based off what they look like. And I think you take Ed Scott and you try to mold him into that. You don't, you don't try to make him be something he's not, but you take some more responsibility with the guys and as far as, like, take a leadership role, start setting the pace for the guys, and then you get him and Trent and Zeke, um, Isaac, all, like, kind of running the show like that. But it's like, I'm so over the moon what this team's going to look like next year, for yeah. sure. Now, I do want to point out that I'm actually looking at the rankings here, and, and it uh, Intermat has Bryson Donian from Virginia Tech actually as a junior, which – oh. I find it interesting, which because I'm, I could swear they were talking about him like this is his, you know, well, you know, the COVID year, year. Yeah, COVID so, year, man, no one yeah, knows anything. COVID year, but but kind of like maybe maybe with like Alex Faison. I mean, Faison technically isn't a senior, but he said no, I'm 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 done. I'm I'm moving on. So, uh, um, but but yeah. Now the one thing which for Ed Scott is that Penn State. Obviously, we're, if you're talking about wrestling, you're going to talk about Penn State has a guy that absolutely man he might be freshman of the year levi haynes from penn state uh who uh, uh won the big 10 championship uh made it to yeah. the ncaa championship match against austin o'connor he's a, a high schooler freshman. yeah he was a high like, schooler last year <laughs> like that's crazy like it's it, so it, and i guess that kind of leads me i guess that kind of leads us into our next topic here so 
for Pat Popolizio, his goal, which he said multiple times, is winning a team national championship. That individual na- individual national championships are great. And we want as many of them as we get. But at the end of the day, it's all about working to that team national championship. But looking back, we got 10th. We actually finished one point behind Virginia Tech even, too, which definitely hurt. Not what we wanted to see necessarily. Um, but, you know, we finished well, well behind Penn State and Iowa. And for me, my my kind of philosophy always with, with a program is I just want to see overall – a, a upward trend. Like I want to see us moving, you know, in an upward direction. I don't want to see a plateau. I don't want to see us going downward. Now, I think overall, if you look at what Pop Popolisi has done, you see the upward trend for sure. Uh, but my worry is that for next season, there that that everything that we've talked about hype wise is 100 percent there, and the fact that we have nine of our ten uh, wrestlers returning for next year. Uh, we also have a lot of guys who can easily step into that one spot with phase on and easily compete and be a top 25 wrestler or even better. Uh, but I feel like my, my biggest worry is that now that now that we didn't have anybody even in the net, in the championship matches, it puts a lot of pressure on next year to deliver. Do you kind of have that same thought process at all? Just because of the fact that after next year you lose, you know, a couple of guys, you know, main guys and Trent Hyde's, uh, um, you know, you have even have some older guys like maybe Trumbull might consider, you know, moving on possibly just since he is kind of in the same route as phase on uh, with ROTC. Uh, do you kind of see next year as kind of like a, a, a boomer bust almost? Um, not necessarily. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. Um, I think we we want we want to we want to compete with Penn State and we want to compete with Iowa. Ohio State, I think, got third, and they didn't have anyone place higher than third place. So, like, um, I or they, like, going into the last day, they were very positioned. I, they, they definitely got a team trophy, and I, forgive me, I don't know exactly what they got because they're not the team that I keep up with. But, like, I think Penn State right now is on a Michael Jordan-esque, like, dynasty run. And yeah. when you can't, and when you can't look up or look back and say like, look how far we come, and you start and you start comparing yourself to, we're not doing what they're doing, and you look at the resources they have. That's not an excuse, but if you look at the resources they have, we're not we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Yeah. And, and, it, and honestly, it's a little unfair for like like look at the guys they have in their RTC. Like RTC is just now starting life. Tommy's always been there. Mock's always been there. Hitley's coming back to be in there. And now we're going to get more guys as we grow the pro- program, as, as these guys get involved uh, more so. As guys like me, old alumni coming back through just to, you know, build that cohesive, build that community. And I think, like, when I was there and the resources they have now, very different. And mm-hmm. Pat's still building something. And I think, I think, We've seen the cakes that he's made, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've seen the cakes that he's made, and now we want like we each time it's a better looking cake, and I think we're trying to accelerate that. And I think it, it just takes time. I think it just yep. takes time, and I think yeah, no. It, you know. And again, I mean, I I want to make clear too that I'm not necessarily saying like you know Pat, you need to deliver, but what no. I'm saying <laughs> is Pat has made perfectly clear like that is our goal is to win a team national championship. Yeah. And I mean, we've, we've placed as high as fourth in the team uh, standings of four. So it's like, well, to go from fourth and now for the last two years, when you've had the Hadley brothers, you've had, uh, you know, Buller brothers, things like that. Now you have Trayvon, you have, you know, whatever for us to get 10th, you know, two years in a row is like, hmm, like, you know, that's, that's, we, we want to be a little bit more than that, you know, just a little bit more like, you know, we just, we just want to kind of be nipping at the heels of Penn state a little bit, you know, just to kind of move our way up. So, so again, yeah. I I'm, I'm only comparing what I know. No, yeah, absolutely. At, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. But to say, but to say, I mean, obviously Penn state has a recruiting pitch right outside its, its back door. It has all the money it ever needs. It has all the history. Like it has everything. Like it's, it's, it's not even, like in college football, you can like Bama is predominantly the guy, but Ohio State, Michigan, you know, uh, you know, Ohio State, they have probably similar recruiting pitches in terms of level. But Penn State is 
wrestling is completely different that Penn state has like the key to it all. Like, like Iowa can, can make a case, but not to Penn state's level. Penn state just has, again, the, between the recruiting behind his back door, the resources, the fan support, the money it's, it's unmatched. There's no other program in wrestling that has what Penn state has. So completely agree with you on that for sure. So, uh, you know, definitely that's why, I mean, for anybody who's listening, I, I can't speak enough that, I mean, like I know this year, we finally invested to uh, make a, to to uh, upgrade our locker room for for wrestling, which is definitely much needed. But yeah. we, we we need more than that, you know. We 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 need all the help that you can give us if you're listening or watching us right now. Please, please, please support, and it a hundred percent will you will get a return on your investment. I can guarantee yeah. you that between Papalizia, Adam Hall, Kevin Jack, and Timmy McCall, all those guys, they will give you a return on your investment, guaranteed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> ditto. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so now I, I want to kind of talk a little bit about, uh, kind of touch on a couple of wrestlers here. So, Trefon, Owen Trefon, uh, you know, for me, I felt like he did what I expected him to. Uh, you know, definitely wasn't really thrilled with his loss to Elon against Missouri, uh, Elon, Elon, not Elon, Elon yeah, Elon against, yeah. uh, from Missouri. Uh, definitely you know, wish he could have squeaked that one out just to get a shot against Hendrickson uh, from Air Force. Uh, but I mean, other than that, you know, I, I would say, you know, a, a solid overall tournament, uh, you know, wish he would have even maybe done a little bit more in the constellations bow, but you know, if, 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 it, if some butts were candy and nuts, you know, it's, it's, you yeah. know, well, it is what it is. But I think at the end of the day, I still have to sit here and go, listen, this guy's a sophomore. Uh, he's easily a top 10 wrestler in the country. And now, especially with some seniors, he's going to be competing for a top five, uh, seed in the whole country, which is exactly what we need. Just like you said, you don't need guys to win a national championship. You just need them to be, to get points, to be competitive and to stay alive as long as possible. I think with Owen Trefon for at least for the next two years, you're going to have that guy finally at the heavyweight division that we haven't had in a while. So, you know, I mean, anything to kind of expand on that there, Nigel? Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time worrying and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. I think, right, I I got the Russell and Nick. And so, like, I've yeah. seen, like, and Mike Kasoy. So I got, I've seen, like, elite level wrestling. And I think he's there. I think he's right there. Uh, he's from a great high school, uh, Blair. And they're just, they churn out guys all the time. I think, you know, another year in the past system, we're going to see he split time last year, I think, with uh, with the, with our other heavyweight. And this year, Tyree the, yeah, Tyree. Turn and this out. year is his first year as the guy, like for most of the year. Um, mm-hmm. So I think Pat gets him for another year. Um, we'll be excited. That's like that's like for me every time every guy we're talking about, except for Faison, we're going to see him again. We're going to see him again. Yeah. And um, yeah. And then we got other guys, and we'll talk about that later, but we got other guys who are in the wings who are coming back, are going to be healthy again. Like, we're, mm-hmm. we're going to be – last year's team, we lost, like, probably the best captain we've ever had. And, um, and hey, right. mm-hmm. yeah, and we still finished him, right? Mm-hmm. Both, like, we didn't really – like, that wasn't a rebuilding. We just kind of reloaded. And now all those guys are coming back. We're getting, we're going to get old, more experience and, like – so like with Owen, yeah. stay on the same course. Stay on that same course and keep rolling. Keep rolling. Just keep rolling. Yeah. He's, he's going to get there. He's going to break through. And heavyweight's wide open next year. Well, and, and that's my, and my thing too as well is that if you're Pat Papalizio, how much do you really say, all right, Jackson Arrington, all right, Trombley, all right, Trayvon, like you're the guy. We are focusing on you. We are going to get you rolling. Like you know, and really focusing. Like kind of like a football, giving them all the first team reps, saying we're not even going to give somebody else. We're going to give you all the first team reps. Uh, but also too, I mean, especially with Pat Papalizio's recruiting and the guys that we have on roster, how much would you say there's a balance there between saying, 
all right, you're the guy we're focusing on you or saying, all right, we're going to kind of give, we're, we're going to kind of open up to some competition here to see what else we have, or maybe kind of push you a little bit. What, what would you kind of say in terms of finding that balance? I think you always want competition, sure. right? You always want competition. Think how, think how much better you're going to get when you're a top 10 heavyweight in the country and there's a guy right behind you who's maybe a top 15 heavyweight. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's something you kind of figure out um, in the summer, really. Like, Mm -hmm. Pat probably knows going into after preseason, he probably has kind of a build, kind of a team structure in mind going into preseason or coming out of preseason. But then, Mm -hmm. like, guys like me, I was a a one-semester wrestler where I did all my best wrestling either the first half of the season or the back half of the season. And, um, yeah. and you know, and you got different guys who kind of respond like that, but not anymore. That was back. That was a, a wayward time. But like, um, mm-hmm. like I just think, I think he's going to be right there. I think he's going to be right there. And if we bring in competition for, if we bring in competition for Owen, that's only going to make him better. He's a, he's going to yeah. be the guy next year. Um, now, the one thing which I do want to ask is I can't remember which wrestler it was, but I remember there was a wrestler that uh, was from like a smaller university that, uh, you know, I think made it to the to, I think he was an All-American. Uh, and he kind of threw out there saying that I'm not sure if I'm be wrestling right next year, but and but if I do wrestle, it may not necessarily be with this with this school. So I was kind of hinting that I might transfer if I do come back. And I remember a lot of people in the comments were like, you know, hey, come to state, come to state. And correct me if I'm wrong, besides Gwiz from who came from Binghamton, have we really had guys that I'm not thinking about? And then if and then kind of secondly, is that something that maybe Popolizio needs to consider? I mean, I know that I mean he already has some great guys in the locker room. So it's like, you know, do you really want to go do do you really have a need to necessarily go after a guy or even necessarily want to go after a guy when you feel confident about what you have in the locker room? I mean, if you can bring somebody in that's going to – don't don't look at it as like, can we get better at this weight? Can we get better as a team, right? So if you can bring a guy in who has all-American experience, why not bring him in? Um, yeah. And then, like, other part of that, I think Owen's an underclassman. Um, so, yeah. like, if he beats that guy out, we gotta, we're going to have Owen for another two or three years um, right. at a high level. And yeah. the other part of that is Pat recruits, right? Pat recruits yeah. and some and like little, like sometimes you don't know, you'll see a guy and you, you don't, you won't even know, Hey, Pat talked to that guy for four months before he decided to go somewhere else. So you're always building, you're always building these relationships with guys and you're always building relationship through your alumni too. We're like Tommy, like with Tommy, we got on the Twitter space. Tommy's like, yeah, we know that guy too. Yeah. I know a little bit about him too. And you're like, how does Tommy know all this? Well, you, you know, Tommy, we're, talks. Tommy talks to people and Tommy <laughs> hears and, and coaches do that. They'll call you and say, a coach will call you and say, Hey, I'm looking at this guy. Um, he's from North Carolina. Is he any good? Or, Hey, I'm looking at this guy. He's from Arizona. Is he, what do you think about him? Right. So, mm-hmm. so we, well, Pat probably has some Pat or even um, Adam probably have a relationship with a lot of the guys already. Um, mm-hmm. And when you lose a recruit now with the different portal uh, options that you have, and I'm smiling as I say that, like you don't want to, those relationships last longer now, right? They last beyond True. you signing your letter of intent, right? And uh, yeah. but you, like I said, like I think this the, the team we're returning next year is a top five team, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, plain and simple. Plain and simple. Yeah, and if we get, and again, like I said, don't look at the weights. Look, look, I who, would who say makes our guy if better. If we're not three, I'm kind of scratching my head a little bit, honestly. I mean, just because of the fact that, I mean, we were number right. three before the tournament started, and then now you're bringing pretty much everybody back. So it's like, you know, and then, I mean, because I know if you look at the guys that finished ahead of us, even in the tournament, whether it's Cornell, I mean, obviously Yanni's gone and then et cetera, et cetera. So, but, you know, again, I mean, I, I've, I, I'm I'm scratching my head, but I'm not saying like, what? We're not three. That's that's crazy. But I think now if we're not top five, then I'll be like, what? Like, how can we not be top five? So, yeah. Now, another weight class I want to jump to to kind of wrap up part one here is 125. You kind of mentioned earlier about Trombley. Uh, 
man, what a tough, I think this is going to be one of the more like kind of buckle up and, you know, get your popcorn ready. Cause what's pop going to do at 125? you know, between Trombley who started off the season, just terrible, like losing just some, you know, inexcusable uh, out of conference matchups. And then, but then all of a sudden he goes in the ACC's and doesn't lose a match in the ACC wins the ACC championship looks amazing. And then in the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, he, let's see, he beats, uh, uh, he beats Dean Peterson from Rutgers and then he faces Matt Ramos from Purdue who, I mean, I think he had a pretty good tournament. Matt Ramos. Am I, if I might be mistaken. You know, <laughs> I, th- I think he pulled off the biggest upset in NCAA wrestling history, but you know, I, I could be wrong there. So <laughs> yeah, no. And, and which I do got to ask you on a side note. I mean, were you watching that match Ramos and Spencer Lee match? Yeah. Like, take me through that. Like to me, I was like, did I like, first of all, like, honestly, to me, I, I was saying to myself, like, this, this is a big deal, right? Like, like, I, 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 like basically I was saying, I think this is a huge deal, but I'm not sure. And then of course I went on Twitter and it was like, oh my God, like Spencer Lee lost by pinfall. And, and so, yeah, that was, that was one of the coolest matches and wrestling moments I've ever seen. Yeah. So they wrestle, obviously it's an interconference match and they wrestled in conference and Ramos or Ramos, excuse me, had like, Ramos. he actually, yeah, he actually pronounces it Ramos. He had okay. everything for Spencer in their first matchup and Spencer got to where he's good on top and kind of was able to like settle the match a little bit, but it was still very close. And Ramos is a Greco guy anyways. Um, you can kind of tell no excuses. You can kind of tell that um, Lee was kind of laboring the entire match and Ramos physically which is kind of unheard of against Mr. Lee physically looked better, looked, looked stronger. Um, and it kind of looked like if you look at, at the pinning position, um, Lee was up with riding time and had just got the tilt. Um, Ramos had thrown him earlier in the match for some big back points. And uh, Lee got to his tilts again and was able to start closing the distance and then kind of look to control the match that way. Um, like you see, like I said, you can tell that he was laboring, but it, mm-hmm. everyone, it's it's March, everyone's laboring. I'm, I'm I didn't even wrestle this year, and I'm laboring. It's March, <laughs> right? It's a long season. Yeah. It's a long season, and um, so there's really no excuse. But you look, um, he went up to his feet instead of like you know your traditional mat return to try to like lock around the hips. And Trent actually does a really good mat return where you see him lock around the hips, step forward, get his weight going. He he finds the hips and places the hips to the mat. Spencer kind of went one hand up, one hand at the ankle. That's a little bit of a stall ride. And mm. it's probably smart for how much time was left, but Ramos was kind of waiting for it and yeah. got double unders or got double overs, whereas he's Greco guy, so he's already tough in that position. And yeah. if he didn't pin him, time was going to run out and he was going to lose. So, yeah. I mean, it was huge. Yeah. Now I do, you know, this is also one question that I've seen because I, I watched a lot of uh, like post match, you know, talks about it and discussions about it. Because one of the biggest things, and we'll, and by the way, too, we'll kind of after this question or topic, we'll kind of end here, part one, and we'll pick up talking about Trombley Camacho here at the beginning of part two. But I feel like this is, I mean, if if, if we're talking wrestling, you can't not talk about this just because it's that big of a deal. But uh, but one thing for me that everybody's talking about is the fact that after Spencer Lee lost that he forfeited the rest of the matches for the tournament. Um, and to me, and cause a lot of people are saying like, you know, was it like, was he right to do that? Like, was it, you know, unsportsmanlike for him to just say, Oh, I lost, I'm out of here. I'm done. But obviously like, like you were saying, uh, Spencer Lee has definitely been dealing with injuries. And, but so part of me says I get it because of the fact, first of all, that, it's like I've already had – and I mean, it, it, for him, it was embarrassing. For him, it was embarrassing. There's no reason I should have lost this guy. So it's like do I really want to risk going out there and getting embarrassed again by losing another match and when I'm already injured? But also, too, because of the fact that even if I win, it doesn't do anything because, first of all, he's already won the national championship three times. But also, too, from a team points perspective, Penn State's already way run off with it. And there was also nobody really within striking distance of Iowa. So they were already established second. Like it was done. They were second place. So to me, I, I get it because it's like, 
there was nothing really to gain from an individual perspective, but there was something there to lose from an individual perspective. And then from a team perspective, there's nothing to win or lose. Now, obviously the other side you might say is, I mean, from a sportsman perspective, it makes it almost seem like I'm too good for a third place of a sort, which I, I'm, I'm not in his head. I don't know what he's thinking, but I would assume that's, that's not his, that, that wasn't his thinking, but what was, I, I want to kind of hear from you, Nigel, as being a former wrestler, like being, if you were in his shoes, you know, you had three-time national champion going in, you were heavy, heavy favorite. Like there's no doubt Spencer Lee is going to win. It's just who gets to lose tonight, Spencer Lee. And then you lose by pinfall uh, and uh, everything that I had just explained. I mean, do, do you agree with his decision? Like what, what, what's your kind of thoughts on it? So I can't, outright say out, outwardly I have a tough time rationalizing it so with that being said like he's so great he doesn't really owe us anything right yeah and the other part of but the other part so we'll move that to the side the most yeah. important thing like for me where wrestling teaches you is perseverance and just like forget the toughness forget the mentality forget whatever it's just like no matter what you always go out there and you put your singlet on and you represent your university the best way you can. Um, so at, from that perspective, a little disappointed, but from the other perspective, like he's also like, he's, he's like what? 24 years old. <laughs> so, well, like, and, and, and well, and he's, he's already pretty much inarguably one of the greatest Iowa wrestlers of all time. If not one of the greatest college wrestlers of all time. So, yeah. I mean, so I, I get it. And, and it's, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, and cause another thing as well, cause another point, which some people brought up is like a lot of people, especially in wrestling where injuries happen quite often, you know, uh, you know, injuries happen quite often is that if you have an opportunity to wear the singlet, even one more time, like I'm sure like if I asked you Tommy or mock or whoever, like, Hey, like if I gave you an opportunity to say, Hey, I'll let you go wrestle one more match, you know, in rails Coliseum wearing the NC state singlet. I mean, there's no doubt. I'm sure all of you guys would, would jump at the jump, jump at the opportunity, like not even thinking a second otherwise about it. And so that's, so I, I get that aspect as well. It's like, listen, you're, you're, you're missing out on opportunity to, to represent your school, to wrestle, you know, at the college level one more time, you know, it, it's, you're just letting it go, which is, it's sad. So, but it's, it's a tough situation. It's a very unique situation. Uh, I don't very think unique. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you'll ever have that. <laughs> I don't think yeah. many people will have the opportunity, you know, come up again. So, yeah. Um, anyway, but all right, y'all. So with that being said, we're going to pause right there. We're again, we're going to pick up talking about uh, Trombley and Camacho here in part two here. Make sure again, if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new NC State Tuffy Talk content. And if you love NC State wrestling, please let us know in the comments uh, who has been your most surprising wrestler this year. Who's the Who's your favorite wrestler? Uh, those two questions specifically. Who's who are uh, are you most impressed with, and who is your favorite? Let us know that in the comments. And if you love in state wrestling, hit that like button and give us a follow. Tough to talk now on Twitter, Instagram. We'll see y'all for part two. As always, go pack, y'all. <laughs>